say that um, these issues have been something that um, have been near and dear to my heart because I had the honor and privilege of working with Pete Geeson, uh, first as his legislative aide, and then uh, he was my mentor when I first was elected to the House of Delegates some 13 years ago. Uh, and we've made some progress, but we still have many challenges. Uh, and there are many challenges ahead, uh, especially um, after we find out what's going to happen tomorrow when the governor announces uh, additional cuts. So what I thought I'd do is quickly take a little time to talk about those budgetary issues, uh, because I do serve on the subcommittee um, in, on the Appropriations Committee that deals with um, mental health is issues, the Health and Human Resources Subcommittee. And um, that committee, uh, for good or bad, has to um, balance the budget related to uh, that sector uh, of our budget. And I think um, I'm proud of the work we've done, um, but I also know there's more work to be done. When we went to Richmond this, this past January, we were confronted with uh, looking at strategies to um, deal with the general fund revenue shortfall of $3.7 billion. The governor looks like he's going to be announcing an additional $1.3 billion uh, in, in, in a shortfall which has to be made up. The first reductions the governor made um, last year were in August, and he reforecasted uh, his, um, his revenue estimates for this biennium, and he's probably going to make the same similar announcement uh, tomorrow on how he's going to address that and, and what the reforecast will be. Now, the budget the governor introduced in December of last year that the General Assembly dealt with um, also assur assumed um, some further weakening in Virginia's economy, and that's no surprise to anybody. We've all encountered that and uh, been dealing with that. The governor at that point recommended a downward adjustment of, um, of $387.7 million for the remainder of the biennium and for a total general fund revenue to, um, reduction of $2.9 billion. Finally, the governor revised the forecast downward in mid-February while we were in session, another $821.5 million for the biennium based on the January revenue collections that we had at that point. Now, what did, what did this have to do with uh, mental health? What was the impact? The reductions did obviously affect spending for services for mental health and the mentally disabled. Uh, the agencies had to come up with a savings of $18.8 .8 million in general fund uh, dollars and $19.7 million, um, that was for 2009, and $19.7 million for 2010, mainly through administrative reductions and efficiencies, and, and Donna and OU and the community services boards um, had to deal with that along with the department. Um, we also um, had to reduce by $582,000 for 2009 and $795,000 um, for 2010 for uh, a number of services, uh, including uh, mental health services for jails, funding for individuals with mental uh, illness at state hospitals and private ho who require private hospitalization and um, funding for eight internships to attract and retain child psychologists or child psychiatrists in the Commonwealth. Now, what we were able to do during the General Assembly session in 2009, I'm giving you the bad news up front, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit of the good news that we were able to accomplish. In 2009, we were able to restore 200 mental health retardation waiver slots. Uh, Warren, that's something I know dear and dear to uh, ARCs, Part, um, as it is with um, actually the House of Delegates. That's been an initiative the last two years for us. Um, in, um, we were able to um, suspend in the introduced budget a uh, cost of $4.9 million uh, general fund and $7.5 million non-general fund of Medicaid matching funds. We also provided $2.5 million in general fund dollars and $3.7 million in non-general fund dollars for um, an additional $200 mental retardation waiver slots beginning January 1st of 2010. We also were able to restore funding for um, $4.1 million in general fund and $7.1 million in non-general fund for um, the eliminated or the pr proposal to eliminate the cap on the number of um, Medicaid elderly and disabled waiver slots. We restored funding of $7.1 general fund 
for the eliminated proposal, uh, proposed assessment on providers of intermediate care facilities for the mentally retarded. And there were some, some other minor, uh, some other smaller uh, items we were able to take care of as well. I'm not going to go into those, but I do want to talk about um, a couple before my time runs out that I think are very important to this area, uh, but also to the mental health system across the Commonwealth. Um, as you all may remember, we were able to um, look at um, the, um, the uh, capital needs for two facilities here, and Joe, I'm glad to see you here. Um, one of the things that we were able to do is um, continue to move up and um, provide the funding for the replacement of Western State Hospital in Stanton, um, $110 million. Uh, we were able to restore funding uh, for the Commonwealth Center um, in Stanton, which I think was a great accomplishment and was, uh, let me see, um, $6.2 million general fund and $1.8 million of non-general fund to restore funding for the center. And then we were able to also um, restore funding for, um, uh, as was mentioned by Warren, the, the, South, the Southeast uh, Virginia Training Center um, in Chesapeake, and also the Southwestern Virginia Mental Health Institute in Marion. And um, although uh, I was not, um, did not think at least the uh, Chesapeake Center was as high a priority because of the issues that uh, Warren has mentioned, uh, that money wasn't in the budget. I also want to say that um, those facilities are important, um, especially the ones in the Valley, because of the service area that, as you all know, um, the mental health facilities serve. A lot of folks don't realize that, that the Commonwealth Center is basically serving children from all over the Commonwealth. Um, but the um, Western State Hospital is, is serving many, um, many, many uh, folks from Northern Virginia and from across the Commonwealth as well, even though we're supposed to be uh, basically serving those folks in the western part of the state. I also have to say with uh, a proposal that um, we were able to work with um, I have to give um, Delegate Saxman credit um, for both those, uh, working on both those facilities, working with Delegate Klein and Senator Hanger and others um, in a bipartisan manner. We've, we've been dealing with these issues. And I also want to congratulate uh, the Stanton City Council members who are here in working with the Commonwealth uh, to look at transferring the land uh, that is in front of the property for Western State so that a new facility can be built um, farther back um, and that the city will be able to use that land uh, for further development and uh, additional tax revenues for the city. Um, and um, some people have asked me, well, why, was the, why would the state want to do that? Well, um, most people forget that the state also collects sales tax. And if uh, the city's doing well, um, the, the state will do well as well and, and recoup those funds. But that's just an example of some of the things we've been able to accomplish. Um, I've been glad to be part of that team that has worked on those issues. Um, one of the things about mental health issues over the years since I've been involved, they've never been a Democrat or Republican issue, they've been a Virginia issue, and the citizens um, have been much better for it. Uh, and um, I think that um, from my perspective, uh, it's been something that's been an important issue. I hope to have the opportunity uh, to work on that again um, if the, the citizens of the 25th House District see fit to um, renew my contract for two years. Um, because it is an issue that's important to the Commonwealth um, in this area. And more importantly, uh, I think sometimes mm -hmm. people forget that um, it's important to the state employee base um, that we have here in the Shenandoah Valley. And those are jobs that work and live uh, not only in the 25th House District, uh, the 20th House District, the 26th House District, um, the 24th House District, the 25th uh, Senatorial District, and the 26th Senatorial District. So um, I look forward to working with the folks that are elected this fall uh, to represent this area in the future if given that opportunity, and look forward to working with you all on these issues uh, in the future. Uh, you all, again, are to be commended for having these forums and continuing to have them, and I look forward to your all's questions.